Hello friends, welcome to our channel Knowledge Amplifier. So today in this particular video we are going to discuss one interesting problem which we might face while working with Kafka and that is large message handling in Kafka. Suppose you are working with image data or you are working with video data or you are working with audio data in real time or for example large text file you are processing for sentiment analysis or some chatbot related use case you are working on where large volume of text data Kafka producer is producing and the consumer need to process do some sentiment analysis etc. So there are a lot of use cases especially in the unstructured data processing domain in real time where while working with Kafka we might need to encounter large messages okay and in Kafka there is certain restriction always that you can maximum publish this much big message at a single sort like for example the configuration can be 1 MB if that is 1 MB that means maximum from producer you can publish one message with volume 1 MB not more than that okay maybe you can think that if my use case require more volume so what i will do i will increase this particular limit by changing the configuration to 10 mb right so what will happen that from the producer in our kafka cluster we can publish some messages up to maximum size of 10 mb right but what about if in future the volume of the incoming message increases maybe the use case in which you are working in your current project maybe currently the maximum size of the message is 10 MB but what about if tomorrow it is 12 MB then in that case the message will not able to be published in the Kafka topic from producer so we need a better solution using which we no need to worry about this kind of threshold value and whatever big message that can be image data video data audio data text data is coming from producer in real time it should able to publish that in Kafka cluster within a particular topic and the consumer should able to consume that okay so that particular architecture and code I am going to discuss today in this particular video okay so we already encountered this particular use case earlier while discussing DynamoDB also in a DynamoDB in a particular row there is a limitation that only this much MB it can store the total row volume right so if we want to store bigger data like for example image data from our front end application we want to store in DynamoDB then what we did in our previous projects that is here basically suppose user is publishing some image that image we are storing in S3 within a particular bucket and that URL S3 object URL we are storing in DynamoDB that is metadata information we are storing in DynamoDB so whenever we need to extract that particular image we extract that URL from DynamoDB and from that URL we extract the original image which is stored in S3 because in S3 there is no limitation we can store huge volume of messages also so no problem in that case if we just store the URL in DynamoDB which will be very short obviously not very big thing right and that URL will point to that particular location where our actual bigger message that can be image, video, audio, text file etc are stored right so it's the same concept or same pattern we can follow in case of large message handling with Kafka okay so let me just draw the architecture quickly so suppose here we are having our producer and here we are having our consumer the producer is publishing messages and the consumer is consuming the messages from Kafka cluster here we are having our Kafka cluster in middle maybe that is a Kafka topic you can think of right now suppose the producer want to publish large messages that can be image, video, audio, whatever data then what producer can do suppose here we are having our data lake that data lake can be S3 or maybe that can be HDFS if you are working with on-prem system okay and the producer what it can do here it can send the large message to S3 or HDFS okay and then obviously it will be getting one URL where the message is stored maybe for example the URL can be looking like s3 colon slash slash bucket name right and then here are some unique identifier like that that is called as nothing but s3 URL so that s3 URL it will be sending as metadata to the Kafka okay send small metadata message Kafka okay so that way whatever volume 
our message be we no need to worry just we are sending the url and in the consumer side what the consumer will do here the producer basically send the url only or metadata for example s3 colon slash slash this is the bucket name then here slash this is the object name like that some s3 metadata information it has sent which is very small volume now the consumer will consume that okay so here i can write consumer will consume this small metadata message and then once the consumer get the url what the consumer can do it can go to s3 and from s3 from this particular url where actually the producer has pointed or kept the actual large data consumer using that particular url fetch the large message okay so here i can give an arrow and then like this way i can give an arrow and here basically retrieve large message from s3 okay so this is one of the architecture which you can implement while working with kafka and if your use case is handling large size messages okay right so what this architecture says i am just repeating again the producer maybe from some real time source system has received some large volume of message for example it can be text data of 100 mb size etc video data audio data whatever now instead of sending that text data or video data or audio data this kind of unstructured data directly in kafka the producer will first store that in s3 and that s3 url it will be sending to kafka that is basically metadata information and the consumer will consume that metadata information that is in which s3 location actually the data is stored and then the consumer will go to s3 and retrieve the large message from s3 like that way in our kafka system we are not giving the burden of storing the large message okay kafka will be storing the lightweight information only just the metadata information right actual heavy message or bulk data is stored in s3 or hdfs right no problem in that case so i hope the architecture you understood now without any further delay let us directly jump into the implementation section let's visualize the same concept using programming so here for this particular demo we are going to use one very important github code and that you will be getting in this particular place that is kafka large message survey okay so this is one special kind of serialization you can think of where you can configure that if the message volume is exceeding this much byte then instead of writing that message directly in kafka write in s3 if the message size is lesser than that particular value then it will be directly writing in kafka no need to write that small messages in s3 okay now if the message is exceeding that particular threshold then only it will write to s3 location okay here in the documentation they have explained all the important parameters i don't want to go through individual components let me show you the demo that way you can understand the important parts and then later for your requirement you can explore the documentation in a much more detailed way okay so because i am going to show you the demo with python not with java so in python the same implementation is available with this particular module first large message serializer so we need to install these three components first large message serializer kafka python and first streaming okay and then here what i will do first i will start the zookeeper okay and then here i will start my kafka broker also in a new terminal and then here i am going to create a topic the topic name is user s3 okay only one partition i am keeping for demo purpose obviously the same concept is applicable for multiple partition also and here i have created a topic and see the topic got created even if you check the logs here in kafka logs within server logs if you go here you will see the folder user underscore s3 this is the topic name hyphen 0 is indicating this is partition 0 our topic is having only one partition that's why it is showing like this okay right now let's see the code so here i have written a producer code and here we have a consumer code what the producer is doing here i have imported all the necessary modules now here i have created one array basically these messages i will be publishing let's consider big text messages we want to publish in kafka so here some small messages also i have taken some large text also i have taken like hello world is a small message then here i have taken a very big comment then here i have taken a moderate size comment 
then here I have taken another big comment, then here a small message this I have taken, then here check whether message going like that another small message and hi there this is another message I have taken. So what we will do from producer each time we will iterate in this array we will consume one one message and we will publish in our Kafka topic. If the message or text data is exceeding the threshold what we are mentioning then instead of writing directly in the Kafka topic it will upload in S3 and then S3 path it will be writing in the Kafka cluster and the consumer will read that particular S3 URL from that S3 URL it will extract the large data so that way in our Kafka that bigger text data will not at all be going okay right now here we have created our model for first application and this is very important point where you need to configure properly the serializer for our S3 so here first we are providing the base path S3 ID setter this is our bucket name let me show you that I will go to AWS management console I will go to S3 and then here you can see ID setter this particular bucket is there currently it is empty right and then here what I have written that maximum size maximum size I have configured 100 bytes so if the message is having lesser volume than 100 bytes it will be publishing in Kafka topic directly but if the size exceeds than 100 bytes it will be writing in S3 and that S3 path it will be writing in Kafka okay the region I am providing where my bucket is sitting and obviously to set up the connectivity we need access key and secret key that also I have provided okay the topic name where the S3 URL or the actual message will be published that name I have given users s3 just now that topic only we have created using Kafka topic bat file right and then here we are creating the large message serializer and here we are creating a JSON serializer also so here we are giving JSON serializer or s3 back serializer so what our Kafka will do first it will do JSON serialization and then it will upload to s3 to handle message if they are exceeding the configured maximum message size here we have configured 100 bytes so if it is exceeding that it will upload to s3 or it will just follow the normal json serialization approach okay here we have done the normal configuration like here we have given the application name broker where in our local system in what port our kafka broker is running that we have configured and then here we have created the user topic using the first application okay and then here we have created a timer using this this particular code will run with 10 second interval what it is doing it is randomly choosing one comment out of the array data points what we have created here and that randomly chosen data it is publishing in the Kafka topic using dot send method okay with 10 second interval as simple as that right so this is pretty much our producer side let's go to the consumer side if you see the upper part it is more or less same only nothing new okay just now what I discussed and in the main consumer here see our agent is running in asynchronous manner here we are consuming the stream which is pointing to our Kafka topic we are just printing the information okay so here we are not doing any rocket science in the consumer side or producer side here we just mention the serializer properly the consumer will automatically understand that if the message is having lesser volume than 100 bytes that means the message is actually sitting in Kafka topic it will directly consume from that or else if it is having S3 URL, it will go to that URL, it will read the message in consumer side. We will see that, okay? And then here we are running our app.main file using consumer. Now what I will do, I will start my producer first application and consumer first application both, okay? So here if you see, this is our producer, this is our consumer. So let's start our consumer first. Here I have started the consumer and then here I will start the producer, okay? And to observe the effect, I will start the Kafka consumer in console mode also. Okay, so see the Kafka consumer that file also we are running pointing to our Kafka topic. Okay, so maybe I will open comment prompt and I will paste this. Okay, so two consumers are running one is in our console, one is using our first application. Now, here we will start our first producer which will read a message randomly out of that text array and it will publish in Kafka. If the message is having lower volume than 100 bytes, it will be publishing directly or else if it is exceeding that maximum threshold, it will upload in S3 and that S3 URL, it will be publishing in Kafka. Okay. Now let's observe the effect. So if you see here, the worker is ready. Now let's see first message it should publish soon randomly taken from 
our array or Python list what we have configured. So see first it has published a bigger message okay. So because it is exceeding that threshold it has uploaded to S3. Let's go to S3. If I just refresh here see folder got created with the topic name within that values is there within that this file is there. Let's download this particular file and you will see that it is containing the same information what our message we have published okay. So let me open that using notepad and here you will see the comment thank you so much for the explanation I am currently building the project etc etc. If you see the message what we publish thank you so much for the explanation I am currently building the object object etc etc. Right? And if you see our consumer side the consumer has consumed this particular S3 URL from there it has got the bigger text data. Okay? But actually in our Kafka the bigger text data never went in Kafka actually only that S3 URL or metadata information it has published. If you see our this particular console consumer, see the first message only the S3 URL it is having. It is not having that thank you so much etc etc those kind of information. Right? That's the beauty. Now let's see the next message. So next message only hello world. A very small message we have published. Right? So in this case what will happen? It no need to upload in S3. So if you see here in consumer it has directly consumed the message hello world. Okay. Let's see the next message. Here nice presentation. This is also comparatively bigger message. So it has published into S3 because this particular string also exceeds the mentioned threshold. Okay. So the next message if you see here. If you observe that it has taken from the S3 URL which contain the nice presentation etc. Okay. So if you see in our console consumer. Here you will see the first message it has got S3 URL, the next message it is smaller, so hello world, it has published to Kafka directly. Then the next message, nice presentation that is comparatively bigger, so here it has published the S3 URL, not the actual message, okay. So it is doing all this stuff automatically, like here, check whether message going or not, like that, this message we have published, if you see the producer side, check where message going, okay. So this is small message. So in Kafka it is directly published. If you see the consumer, see here, check where message is going. Directly it came. But the next message if you see, nice presentation, it is very clearly summarized, thanks a lot. So this one is bigger, exceeding the threshold what we have mentioned. So it is uploaded in S3. And in S3, continuously the files got created with unique identifier. It is not like the different file will be having same name and it will be having some conflict, nothing like that. If the message or text data is exceeding the mentioned threshold, it is getting uploaded in S3. As simple as that. And the consumer is reading that particular S3 URL. From there, it is deserializing and then it is getting the actual message from that. That way, using this particular architecture, you can handle as many big messages as possible. No need to worry about the message volume. Okay, right? I hope you understood this. This is all what I wanted to discuss today in this particular video. I will suggest you to go through this particular documentation and the documentation link for first large message serializer. This also I will be providing in the description box. Please go through that because if you go through that you will be understanding more concepts, more parameters, what you can configure for your project and try to implement the same. That way when you will run the code, when you will download the file from S3 and understand what it is containing, you will be getting much more feeling out of it. Right? This is all for my this video. If you find this video helpful, then please like, share and comment. Subscribe our channel if you have not subscribed till now. And don't forget to press the bell icon to get the notification of all latest videos. Thank you for watching.